I want to say, uh, first of all, uh, to uh, the UT Arlington team and coach and staff that, uh, you know, there's, there's life after a tough loss like this. Uh, great bunch of guys, very high character kids. Uh, you know, you hate to see other people in pain when, you, when, you're, when you're celebrating, but uh, that is the NCAA and it is March Madness, but um, Scott and his, and his, and his uh, staff and players did a phenomenal job um, of improving all year long. Um, I was just really happy the way that we were able to defend them the way they were playing, especially from the three-point line. I thought that that was a key for us going into the game, that and our transition defense, and we emphasized that over the last 24 hours, uh, 26 hours to be exact, because <clears throat> we played at six. But uh, just couldn't be happier for my guys, you know, so um, these kids are really uh, stuck together. Um, you know, John Wooden once said, it, you know, it, it takes uh, talent to win a championship, but it takes character to, to repeat. And uh, we have a lot of character. We'll go ahead and take some questions. If you've got a question, please raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone over to you. Coach, you mentioned it there at the end of your statement, but um, just, you know, you're very, you know, obviously a talented team, but you, you talked about character and just talk about the adversity, like all the adversity this team went through and you guys still stay focused, like the last two months especially, and kind of turn it on. Yeah, we, uh, you know, it's one of uh, the components of, of having good character is recruiting kids that come from good families, have been well trained and, and brought up the right way. Uh, whether they have one parent or two parents, it doesn't matter. You, you, uh, you recruit kids, and I've learned this over the years as, as well myself, you recruit kids that come from good families and, and have um, good stock, as my mom says. Uh, and all our kids come from good stock, you know, and, and I think it makes a difference when you're trying to take the baton from them, their parents, and run the next leg, and you want to teach them and, and help them to develop and, and, and uh, you know, life lessons when they occur. And we had a bunch of lessons this year. And, uh, and the guys bought into to everything that I was selling. And uh, so I'm just, I'm really, really fortunate that it worked out according to plan and we reached one of our goals because um, that is kind of like the proof is in the pudding. So now it's even easier for me to, you know, when I, when I, when I lose Bonja and I lose Tyrone, all my young guys are now gonna look at me with with eyes like, yeah, he knows what he's talking about, you know, and that, uh, and that helps, obviously. What's it like just in the locker room when Bonja has been on three tournaments, Bonja and Tyrone have both been a part of, Daniel's been a part of two now. Right. Just, uh, was, that, was that important this week? Was that what? Was that important this week? <coughs> just having oh, there's no question. We can talk about that. You know, we really wanted him to be able to go to three out of his four playing years. We wanted him to be able to, to dance three times, you know. And then, I mean, there's not a lot of high major schools that do that. Uh, it's a phenomenal feat when you look back at what we've been trying to do here at the university ever six, since I took over six years ago. Uh, you know, there's a lot of skeptics in every uh, college town. And I think the key is the people above you, if they get it, and they understand what you're trying to do. Then you, you can't worry about the bloggers and the internet and, the, and the, the fair weather fans, you know? When we look up in the stands in Las Cruces and maybe there's only 5,000 or 4,000 or 6,000 in a, in a 12, 13,000 seat arena, <clears throat> you gotta say the right people are here. You know, the right fans are here. And as, and as you continue to prove yourself, then that number will grow and eventually you know, we can, we can be a Gonzaga, you know, we can, we can be a UConn, which has a small uh, community that, that has a, a large, you know, um, uh, success, you know, and I guess Gonzaga is a better example right now with them being, you know, number one, or I don't know if they still are or not, but, um, but that's how we dream, you know, you got to dream big, and then when you hit a roadblock, you got to go back to work and dream bigger, so I just, you know, I can't say enough about the alignment above me, you know, from our Board of Regents to our President to Dr. Boston. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, the guy's like a supreme mentor to me. I mean, he's taught me how to be a head coach. And, you know, a lot of people kill him a lot of times for different things. And, you know, we have limited resources, you know, uh, relatively speaking. You know, they want me to clobber my, my uh, you know, my, my rivals every year. You know, well, okay. Everything's relative, you know. So 
I, I'll take dancing every year. That's, that, that, if it's okay with my community, I'll take dancing every year. So enough said on that. Let's get back to positive stuff. <clears throat> Just what is it about this program in the last four years that when it comes to this tournament, you guys have, seem to have so much success? Talent. Talent. We've got some of the best recruiters on my staff, Paul Weir. Um, you know, you look at these two guys up here. I, I don't have these two guys without Paul Weir. I mean, I don't even know who Daniel Mullins is. I knew who Sim was, but probably couldn't have got him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's about relationships. And... I think if you want to win, you got to have players. The players are the bloodline of any program. And uh, make no mistake about it, you know, I can be one of the best coaches in the world, but does anybody know who's the head coach at SMU? Larry Brown. Larry Brown. And the rest of you guys are still thinking. Pretty good coach, huh? What'd they do this year? Need some players. Players win championships. And uh, coaches may be able to steal a couple possessions, and I think we did that tonight as a staff. I don't want to knock our coaching staff, because we did it, we did do a good job this year. But, but you know, that's just stealing a few possessions. You got to have players that can, that can get up and dunk and make threes and are versatile and athletic and long and can defend and they can own the own the, the the paint and change shots. That's what that's what makes up a you know, a quality quality basketball team that can hopefully not just dance but stay there a while. And that's our hope this year. Daniel. Two years, two championships at the conference tournament. This is pretty easy, huh? <laughs> Just is. talk about all the success that you've had in Las Vegas over the last couple of years and how special it's been for you. I mean, yeah, like you said, you know, two years, two championships. Um, that's great. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate to be able to have two championships in two years. Sim, as the freshman, just the second freshman ever to be the MVP of the WAC tournament. How special is this for you? in your first year after all the work you put in last year during your redshirt year to see all this pay off this year? Um, it's definitely a great feeling um, seeing where all of my hard work came from. Um, it's a blessing, honestly. I, mean, I, I don't even think I could come this far, but I guess you, you see how, how much hard work takes, how far hard work takes you. Jason. Jason? <laughs> um, Bonja and, and Daniel, can you just talk about I asked Bonja this outside, but um, how, is, how is this tournament, how is this championship team a little bit different than the last year's, would you say? Can you compare um, the two? I think last year we had a little bit more experience, whereas this year uh, we had a lot of new faces. Um, but um, with the new faces, you know, we, got a, we had a couple guys over here last year, such as uh, Tyrone and Bonja, and, you know, Chili on the sidelines, so we were able to, you know, give the new guys a little bit of knowledge and just we were able to share our experience, uh, a little bit of our experiences from last year with him. Bonja, can you chime in on, on that? Yeah, like, um, especially with the uh, injuries and stuff, we had players that were able to step up, you know, keep us rolling. So I think that was really important for us as a team. And then, uh, yeah, when uh, Taiwan came back too, and they got injured again, so I think it was a really um, a good piece of the puzzle. That came, uh, players off the bench were able to step step up <coughs> and give us good production. <coughs> Coach, can you just talk about Terrell's shot? About minute twenty left, you guys were three point lead. He had kind of a step back when the uh, shot clock was running down. Obviously, that was a big play. Um, TMD. Yes. Terrell Moxie Duruan. <laughs> that boy's got way votes, as they say. He, um, <clears throat> he's such a competitor, you know. When I was subbing him out, uh, I think it was about five minutes to go, and I had called a play, and I wanted to get some clock management in. And we were up, I think, six, and he came down. And luckily, he got fouled, but I wanted him to come down and roll into a, a set that would exhaust some time and then get a, 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 a get a shot towards the end of the shot clock, we wanted to get a, a semi, uh, a touchdown deep. <clears throat> so I, I, so I sub KC back in, it was about four or something left. I just saw the look on his face, he was just like, man, just, coach, you gotta roll me, I know what he's thinking, you know. Um, but, you know, it's a family, you know, and right now I wanted somebody who was gonna do a certain thing for me. 
And I knew he would get back in the game. And so, and I had no doubt in my mind that when he got back in, he would be okay. But I wanted to get in his ear first and tell him what he needed to hear. And then the power went dead in the building. And then he made the shot. And uh, we don't have a record of it because uh, the, the lights went off. So, next question. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> but you heard, heard the uh, answer. For the most part, what happened on that shot was, you know, he makes big shots like that. And, uh, and as a kid who's, who's got a lot of moxie, you know, you, you, it doesn't surprise you. And so uh, he's going to be a great player. You know, if I could take some of the characteristics from KC and take some from Terrell, you know, you know, they'd probably be a first-round draft pick. So I got to get them both to get a little bit from each other, and, and I think we, we got a great combination with the two right now. Coach, what does it say about the state of the program that you have three players that started on opening night not in the lineup for a good portion of the conference season, and you guys still were able to do what you did and then come in here and win the tournament championship? Well, um, depth, you know. You get, it comes back down to players again. I mean, you think about uh, recruiting and, uh, you know, Kevin Aronis and Remy Berry and Ronaldo Dixon. I mean, these guys are players, and they weren't starters, and they weren't – and they played, you know, significant minutes. Who else was in that starting lineup? Anybody that – wasn't starting initially. And I think that was Terrell. it. Yeah, Terrell got a lot of minutes as well, yeah. So, I mean, there's just guys that, uh, ah, this is a great team, man. This is a great team. <laughs> this is just, I mean, these guys are so fun. And I would have been, man, I would have been crushed had we lost this game. That was my fear. My fear was the pain that these kids would feel had they lost tonight. And I had to keep just shaking myself and saying, you know, well, I got to be better prepared. I got to make sure that I'm, you know, uh, just that I'm ready, that I'm ready. And my staff does a phenomenal job, you know, from Ryan Mack to Coach Brown to Coach Delk to Coach Weir <clears throat> to Josh Daishi to the whole crew. I mean, we just have a fantastic chemistry in the offices. You know, I got guys here sitting, Samson Coyote and Gerald Lewis, who, who were part of our family and part of these guys' lives at, that aren't even with us anymore, but they, they travel here to Vegas to be with us because – um, because that's who we are. New Mexico State Aggies are, are a family, and uh, I'm just so happy for um, for these guys. It's just it's just an incredible feeling, man. Um, definitely, I know a guy is returning from last year. They got a lot of experience. So they can help out other other players on the team, like where how how the arena is going to be, how everything, how the flow of the game is going to be like. So um, definitely, we pose a big matchup problem because because we got some experienced players on, on this team. Yeah, most definitely. You know, last year we weren't able to, you know, we weren't able to get a win. So this year, most definitely, we're looking to at least get a win and then try to advance in the tournament. <laughs> 